uh, while I'm awaiting the time, let me tell you anecdotally. Uh, in the army, we always tend to start things on time. So, what is the reason why? Because army, when we go to the army, we have to do our coordination, which is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. So, the timing is so fine for the timing. And you may suffer very heavy casualties because of that. So we are used to the system where coordination of timing is very important. And that is why we are now at, as per my watch, at 1757. We can afford to maybe wait for another two minutes before we uh, start the session. But while as, as even while I'm speaking to you, let me, let me say what a pleasure it is to connect once again with the Kashi Manthan, I consider it uh, the brainchild of uh, Mayank and his uh, fantastic team with whom I have interacted on more than many occasions. And uh, each time I have come back, the better in terms of uh, my understanding of people, my understanding of thoughts. Uh, it's very important to be in sync with new generations. And that is what Kashi Manthan is all about. Uh, it's all about young people and uh, it's all being driven by young people. I'm coming in here only to, to give interventions, to give talks, etc. But the ideas are generally all from people uh, who are very, very young and all driving this uh, by their energy. So uh, let me take a last cup of uh, sip of my tea. And I think we will start in a in a minute or so i hope everyone is safe and sound i hope you are receiving all the guidelines and all the cautionaries not warnings but cautionaries um advisories from time to time and everyone is following those things uh, i'm very happy to see that uh, varanasi is not very very badly affected um bhu is uh, safe by and large, and uh, even your rural areas uh, around uh, central and eastern UP seem to be uh, very well managed. Uh, I only hope that we can all bounce back from this uh, kind of situation that we have found ourselves in. Okay, I, th I think we are ready to go. Right, uh, Jai Hind, once again to everyone, Pranam to everyone uh, in Kashimanthan. It's wonderful to be with all of you once again. We hope to have many more sessions subsequently in the future. Just remember that we are talking about a post-COVID-19 world. But we are nowhere near a post-COVID-19 world. We are still in the throes of the middle of this pandemic. How long this carries on is anybody's guess. You go back to 1918, of which I will be speaking a lot. Spanish flu in 1918, it took a fair amount of time before the world really emerged from it. Uh, in the middle of the last 100 years, we've had many such pandemics, but um, they haven't caused this kind of panic, um, this kind of turbulence, because these have been isolated in many geographically, in many parts of the world, the Ebola, the SARS, uh, the swine flu, and things that they, they, they got isolated by and large. and and um, the medical research could get the better of the viruses. Um, we could find um, aspects of immunity reasonably fast. But this time, this is proving to be going to be proving a very big challenge. And therefore, today's session is uh, more about raising questions than actually finding answers. Ye isme jawab aapko itne zada nahi milta hai, as a moke par hai, as a juncture pe hai, is what okay, we are in the throes of the, of, of, the, of the crisis itself, and therefore, what we are doing is loud thinking for the future. Ye bada acha tarika hota hai, kuch webinars mein, seminars mein, mein aapne tajurubay se aapko batata hoon, ke London ka jo Royal College of Defense Studies hai, jaha mein gaya tha ek defay course karne ke liye, wahaan par ek system hai, ke 
जैसे ही कोई क्राइसिस शुरू होती है वो सब प्रोग्राम्स को कैंसिल कर देते हैं और अगले तीन चार दिन सिर्फ जो क्राइसिस है उसको डिस्कस करते हैं क्योंकि उस वक्त तक कुछ इनपुट्स मीडिया के नहीं आते इंटेलिजेंस के नहीं आते इंटेलेक्चुअल थिंकिंग नहीं हो पाती तो जो लोग वेबिनार में हिस्सा ले रहे हैं जो शिरकत कर रहे हैं सेमिनार्स के अंदर या जो भी जो भी फॉर्मेट हम इस्तेमाल कर रहे उनको मौका मिलता है अपने दिमाग से सोचकर ना कि किसी और के आइडियाज को लेकर तो मेरा काम आज है फ्लैगिंग करना बहुत से इश्यूज को फ्लैग करना जियोपॉलिटिकली और उसका शायद आप खुद उसके बारे में फिर पढ़ पाएंगे ज्यादा कि दुनिया में इतना लिटरेचर आज निकल रहा है इसके सो मच ऑफ लिटरेचर ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड दैट इज अमेजिंग यू ओपन एनीथिंग ऑन द इंटरनेट एंड यू फाइंड इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन कोविड नाइनटीन एट द सेम टाइम अगर आप टेलीविजन पर जाइए आप इवन द इंडियन चैनल या आप इंटरनेशनल चैनल पर जाइए हर जगह आपको खबर सिर्फ कोविड नाइनटीन की मिल रही है सो द वर्ल्ड इज एट द मोर्ड ऑब्सेस्ड virtually and that is what a pandemic really is all about more than an epidemic it's really a pandemic pure system ko isne flux mein kiya hua hai aur koi ready made tarika nahi hai jisse ke koi solution nikle magar zaruri hai ke jab bhi ye khatam ho 2 mahine 4 mahine 6 mahine jab bhi iski immunity nikal aaya jo bhi iska hal nikle virus ka उसके बाद जो है हम दुनिया के के पास जवाब होने चाहिए और कुछ जल्दी जवाब होने चाहिए वेरी वेरी अर्ली सॉल्यूशंस सोल्यूशन असेसमेंट मस्ट बी अवेलेबल टू द वर्ल्ड टू सी व्हाट हैज बीन द इफेक्ट क्योंकि पैंडेमिक जो है एक वॉर के तरह होता है इट्स लाइक अ वर्ल्ड वॉर इट इज अफेक्टेड ऑलमोस्ट एवरी फेसेट ऑफ योर एग्जिस्टेंस अगर आप दिमाग वापस जाइए फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर पे सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर पे आप देखेंगे के चार साल फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर चली पांच साल सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर चली इंसान के रह, रहने का एक्सिस्टेंस का तकरीबन हर फैसेट जो है उस पर असर हुआ आप ह्यूमन वैल्यूज देखिए इकोनॉमिक्स देखिए ह्यूमन सिक्योरिटी देखिए जो पॉलिटिक्स देखिए मतलब एवरी पॉसिबल थिंग साइंटिफिक रिसर्च देखिए कम्युनिकेशन देखिए एवरी थिंग वॉज एफेक्टेड समे और दी अदर बैदर By the wars, this is no less than a world war. और ये ऐसे मौके पर आ रहा है कि जहां पर जो मैं पिछले सात साल से अपने टॉक्स में पूरे देश में समझाता आया हूं कि नेशनल सिक्योरिटी को कभी भी आप सिर्फ एक मिलिट्री सिक्योरिटी के एंगल से मत देखिए और मैंने बहुत दफे मैंने मैंने बहुत दफे ये इसमें ये भी किया है कि बताया है लोगों को कि कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव सिक्योरिटी नाम की एक चीज होती है कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव सिक्योरिटी और उसमें एग्जिस्टेंस ह्यूमन एग्जिस्टेंस जो है वो अहम रखता है और ह्यूमन एग्जिस्टेंस के साथ वायरस थ्रेट्स वायरल थ्रेट्स जो होती हैं इस तरह की कि उनका उनका बहुत ज्यादा असर होता है लेट मी जस्ट अ फोन रिंगिंग गेट रेड ऑफ दैट Okay, sorry, my my apologies for that. Uh, so I'll be be taken from where I I left off. So this is as I said is is almost akin to war, and uh, when war ends, it creates a terminal situation. Just me, jo ladai ki shuruat me jo halat thi, wo halat ladai ki akhir me nahi hoti. And the world starts looking at how to. कम बैक टू दी ओल्ड नॉर्म्स वो ओल्ड नॉर्म्स बड़ी मुश्किल होती है वो ओल्ड नॉर्म्स तक पहुंचना बड़ा मुश्किल होता है मोस्टली इट हैपन्स आफ्टर वॉर ऑफ दैट दैट नेचर के द वर्ल्ड मूव टूअर्स न्यू नॉर्म्स और वो न्यू नॉर्म्स हमको एसेस करना पड़ता है कि उस पर लड़ाई का क्या असर हुआ है सो माई माई होल फोकस योर इज ऑन लुकिंग एट दिस पैंडेमिक एज अ वॉर एज अ वॉर सिचुएशन एंड वॉर के एंड में क्या सिचुएशन This is what we are going to be looking at. You see, as I said, the war world is not going to go back to a to a normal situation. Now, I'm just giving you some examples. Let's see. Uh, traditionally, from 1989 onwards, the world had seen a better way of life, a higher quality of life, 
वी वेर एन एन इंफॉर्मेशन एज जिससे हम ट्रांजिट कर रहे हैं अब वॉट एज वी आर गोइंग टू वी स्टिल रियली डोंट नो बट मे बी अ रोबोटिक एज बट दिस इंफॉर्मेशन एज uh along with the technological developments which have taken place have resulted in a much higher quality of life uh people are better off we have in india for example 300 million people 300 million logon ko humne poverty se uthaya hai upar le gaye hain unko to obviously it created a, a, a lower middle class a new uh, upper middle class all this this is all been the values which has been added on since the last 30 years as a part of human and economic uh, development suddenly iske upar asar hone wala hai uh savings jo insaan aam taur pe karta hai uh, apne future ke liye uh, you found in the last few years a lot of people were spending money spending money on luxuries on a better quality of life etc is tarah ka threat jo hai pandemic will immediately create a scare and uh, the human psyche will go into the defensive and you will find people creating going in for uh, even greater savings and lesser expenditure agar aap uh, american great depression pe jaye 1929 mein aur 1949 ke baad jab new deal the american president had come out with a new deal one of the aspects of the new deal was he asked the people of the united states ke paisa kharch kare because jab paisa kharch karenge to consumerism badhega consumerism badhega to demand badhegi demand badhegi to growth badhegi उससे क्या है जॉब्स क्रिएट होंगे एंड द इकोनॉमी विल बिकम मोर वाइब्रेंट नाउ वी डोंट नो व्हाट व्हाट विल बी द स्टेट ऑफ ह्यूमन साइक आफ्टर अ पैंडेमिक ऑफ दिस काइंड विल पीपल टेंड टू गो टुवर्ड्स सेविंग्स और विल टेंड पीपल टेंड टू से के क्या मालूम कितने जिन जीना है ज्यादा अच्छा है कि वी माइट एज वेल एक्सपेंड आवर मनी एंड enjoy whatever life we have this is the kind of effects which come about on human psyche pandemics jo hai inhone duniya ko bahut had tak badla hai ab main aapko ek misal deta hu 1918 sab log samajhte hain 1918 ki kya ahmiyat hai the end of the first world war millions of people died bharat ke khud ke 72000 soldiers died in the first world war we had 1.4 million soldiers from india fighting the war on part on behalf of our colonial masters at that time in 1918 this is always remembered but what people generally tend to forget is that 1918 may uh, one of the world's worst pandemics also came about the spanish flu a spanish flu said up between 50 to 70 million people died in india alone बिटवीन 12 टू 17 मिलियन पीपल है अभी तक आप देख लीजिए हजार ग्यारह सौ हमारी फर्टिलिटीज हुई है कोविड 19 से और इसको आप कंपेयर कर लीजिए कि क्या इसका असर क्या हुआ होगा 1918 में जब 12 से 17 मिलियन लोग दैट दैट डाइड फ्रॉम दिस पैंडेमिक ये वही ये स्पेनिश फ्लू है जो बाद में जिसके खिलाफ जिसके साथ इम्यूनिटी बनी एंड इन बिकेम अ वेरी कॉमन फ्लू सबसे But this must see this in conjunction with some other events which took place. The end of the First World War, so therefore economies of the world were down. A whole generation of people had died in in parts of Europe, in uh, particularly in England. And uh, there was a the Treaty of Versailles was taking place in 1919 to find a, a new world order, some kind of a creation of a peace uh, um, uh, entity in 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 uh, in, in uh, Europe. The League of Nations had been created. अब इस सब के साथ होते होते 1922 में they had a major conference in Washington called uh, the Nine Part Nine uh, Nation Naval Conference, Washington Naval Conference. इसमें the conference was primarily कि किस तरह से ये nine जो मजबूत nations थी, वे much stronger nations, how they would uh, manage their naval assets. जो इतने naval assets create किए थे first world war में उससे डिसमेंट कैसे करें ताकि फ्यूचर में लड़ाई का माहौल जो है वो कम हो हाउ टू रिड्यूस दो एसेट्स अग्रीमेंट्स बट दीज अग्रीमेंट हमाउ कुंड रियली बी इंप्लीमेंटेड इन फुल एंड सात साल के बाद 1929 इट टू सेवन इयर्स लेटर 1929 में ग्रेट डिप्रेशन आ गया तो आप देखिए एंड ऑफ फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर ट्रीटी ऑफ वर्साइल्स 
लीग ऑफ नेशंस का क्रिएट करना वॉशिंगटन कॉन्फ्रेंस नेवल कॉन्फ्रेंस साथ में uh, 1929 में ग्रेट डिप्रेशन और इन द मिडल ऑफ द सर्च फॉर हायर इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ व्हिच नेवर रियली मटेरियलाइज इन सब ने मिलकर क्या असर क्या असर था इन सब का इंटरनेशनल सिक्योरिटी एनवायरनमेंट पे वो ये हुआ कि द द वर्ल्ड लॉस्ट फोकस जो फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर चार साल तक हल्का मचा था दुनिया में वहां से फोकस हट कर हट गया ट्रीटी ऑफ वर्साइल्स को सीरियसली नहीं लिया उसके अंदर जो जितनी फेल्टीज थी फेलिंग्स थी उनको रेक्टिफाई नहीं किया और ऑटोमेटिकली यू हैड द राइज ऑफ नाजी जर्मनी और हिटलर विदाउट कॉन्टेस्ट हिटलर के मतलब इक्कीस साल में वो द वर्ल्ड वेंट फ्रॉम फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर टू सेकेंड और इसके बीच में पैंडेमिक पैंडेमिक जो था स्पैनिश फ्लू का इसका बहुत बड़ा असर हुआ और इकोनॉमिक्स का बहुत असर हुआ अब आप अपनी सिचुएशन पे आ जाइए हम जो है एक ऐसी सिचुएशन में है जहां पैंडेमिक अभी चल रहा है इट्स नॉट कम टू एन एंड वी डोंट नो व्हाट इज गोइंग टू बी द टर्मिनल इफेक्ट फाइनली इट इज आल्सो कम एट अ टाइम एंड द इंटरनेशनल ऑर्डर सिक्योरिटी ऑर्डर इज इन अ रीजनेबल अमाउंट ऑफ फ्लैक्स यू हैव जियोपॉलिटिक्स playing it's it's nasty game here and there you have a tremendous competition between the united states and china not only economic but also military uh, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a game for the balance of power game for the power for for the for aspects of, of uh, strategic influence in different parts of the region south china sea mein kiska zyada influence hai indian ocean mein kiska zyada influence hai middle east mein kiska influence hai aur uh, इसके साथ रशिया रशिया एंड चाइना टुगेदर अगेंस्ट द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स वर्चुअली गैंगिंग अप यू हैव इंडिया एज अ एज अ नेशन विच सपोर्ट्स मल्टीलैटरलिज्म व्हिच हैज गॉट अ स्ट्रांग रिलेशन स्ट्रेटजिक रिलेशनशिप विद द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स अ गुड रिलेशनशिप विद रशिया अ गुड रीजनेबली गुड बैलेंस डेवलपिंग रिलेशनशिप विद चाइना अम ऑफ कोर्स कीपिंग बाय द फैक्ट दैट वी फॉट वॉर्स वी फॉट अ वॉर बिफोर वी हैव हैड आर्म स्टैंड ऑफ्स एंड वी ऑलवेज कीप हैविंग आवर डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन अस but our trade relationship continues to remain very strong so um there these are these are the, there's an international um, flux in the international order terrorism the global war on terrorism has been fought for the better part of the last uh, 19 years there's a major issue of uh, radicalism of ideological conflicts which have arisen around the world we have got a major problem of energy crisis which is there right on on us at the moment aap dekh rahe hain ki russia aur saudi arabia ka ये एक डील ना होना कि ऑयल प्रोडक्शन कैसे ऑयल प्रोडक्शन के अंदर कट्स है उसकी वजह से प्राइस ऑफ ऑयल इज कम नेगेटिव एटलीस्ट दो तीन दिन के लिए तो नेगेटिव हो गया बट इज स्टिल पैकेट अबाउट 18 टू 19 डॉलर जिसका बहुत ज्यादा असर हो रहा है वी विल टॉक अबाउट इट तो ये इंटरनेशनल ऑर्डर भी फ्लक्स में है जैसे नाइनटीन के अंदर भी फ्लक्स में था वैसे ही है और तब पैंडेमिक आया है साथ में इकोनॉमिक डाउन टर्न भी हो रहा है Uh, China, which was growing at 14% in the 90s, came down to 9, 10%, came down to 6.5%, and now predicted that China will also come down to 1 to 1.5%. India, which had a, a racing growth, going up to 10%, and averaged in the last many years at 7%, came down to 4.5, 5%, maybe in the last year or so. Now it is uh, being envisaged, visualized that we may come down to. Um, 1 to 1.5 percent. At least, come to come, recession to not happen. Bharat ka. So, economically, we have, geopolitically, we have. Um, from an aspect of uh, balance of power and influence uh, seeking, us me there is a fair amount of turbulence around the world. And so, it is just like the situation that happened in the 20s. Anything can happen at the at the at the end of this pandemic. We don't know how the new world order is going to emerge, or what the world order will be. We will talk about the new world order subsequently. Um, we've got a fair amount of. Uh, we are just wondering. Traditionally, Europe advanced, industrialized, highly informationized society, high quality of life. very very a uh, strong economies which used to exist of course they become weaker since then and um, centers of excellence tremendous research and development capability institutions which are very strong and despite that you find that a virus which has come from china 
into Italy, Spain, France, other countries, UK. Uh, the control of this virus has, has, has just, uh, the whole situation has gone out of control. It's gone across the Atlantic into the United States, the most advanced society of the world. The best of technologies, the best of research, the finest of institutions around the world. And yet, you've got 59,000 to 60,000 deaths. The figure has crossed the number of soldiers who died in the Vietnam War. And yet, you find countries um, like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, India. God forbid anything ever happen, more happens out here. But some of these are some of the countries which appear to have handled it um, so far, mercifully, in a much more competent way. So uh, there seems to be a sudden, sudden questioning of uh, traditional efficiencies of different parts of the developed and advanced societies. And uh, this is something that we will have to keep in consideration as we look at the post-COVID-19 world. Uh, one thing which will definitely happen, it is going to happen. We were already witnessing as a part of the process that we were undergoing at the moment, we were already seeing that from 1989, a tremendous globalization, effort towards globalization had taken place. Uh, the famous uh, flattening of the world, um, cheap, cheaper labor, capital moving to cheaper areas where there was cheaper labor, more of manufacturing taking place, their service industry remaining in uh, relatively more advanced societies and tremendous amount of growth took place around the world in China, in India, different other countries which had not seen uh, that, that kind of growth before. And interdependency of the world and of course uh, the coming of the internet, World Wide Web, the networking of the world, all this uh, led to a, a fairly robust uh, economic system that the world was seeing and the quality of life of people was definitely increasing because of this. All of a sudden, we were seeing in the last few months, maybe a year or so, uh, uh, a, a campaign against globalization. And the pandemic now is what it is creating, is a, a step or a couple of steps towards isolationism, where nations are saying, that uh, they would prefer to handle it themselves. They would like to close their borders. They would not like people traveling in. They have closed their airports. They have closed their land ports. They have closed their, their, their sea ports. And that is the best way of, of, of fighting this. Uh, well, that will possibly give you results. But will this lead to greater isolationism? Uh, can, the, can this take the world towards greater isolationism? All that we have achieved through globalization, will it lead to greater protectionism where you suddenly see a, a downturn in international trade and trends of that kind. These are the kind of things that we should be worried about and looking at. Uh, with each nation looking at its own interests, with each nation looking at, well, for example, research and develop technology it's on, its, on its own, in its own and not sharing it with the rest of the world. The, inter the, the concept of an international community may undergo a complete change. And this is one of the things which happens at the, at the end of a war, of a great war, or of a pandemic, which is equivalent uh, to war. Let's look at vaccine. Uh, we are nowhere near at the moment, they say, near the uh, development of a vaccine. We are still not near, anywhere near immunization or immunity from the COVID-19. They say that we'll have to go through herd, um, complete the herd concept before, before uh, uh, immunity can actually be uh, developed. So I don't know how and where the vaccines are going to be um, developed and created. Uh, America, a country which uh, traditionally has led science and technology efforts in the last many years, appears to suddenly have taken a back step and is not leading the research any longer for the, for the development of, of an anti-COVID-19 vaccine. You find efforts are going on in Europe, efforts are going on in China, efforts are going on in India. And that should make us wake up because you're suddenly finding India at the 
center of all this uh, when it came to hydroxychloroquine you found the united states uh, much of europe was looking at india because there was also a perception and a notion that uh, in india immunity has already been developed to some extent kafi had tak yahan par immunity jo hai bad ke badi bhi hai kyunki bcg vaccine jo tuberculosis ke liye thi wo india mein almost by compulsion our young children have uh, been immunized with it um, also our fight against malaria has hit us chloro chloroquine which was used as a part of it in the army mein to sabhi is anti malaria um, chloroquine jo hai isko isko consume karte karte the aajkal to kam ho gaya hai iske upar so india was asked upon then uh, then asked to or requested to share its uh, the warehousing the amount of um, uh, stocks that we had in our warehouses to to share some of those uh, stocks with the rest of the world and you found that india has actually opened up i think 15 to 18 drugs which have been opened up earlier there was a ban on their export and now that ban has been uh, lifted so india's stock is rising in the non military sphere you see india's stock rising completely in this in this in this particular manner magar kya vaccine jo hai development of vaccine intellectual property rights uske um baki connected things with it uh, can it lead to nations actually developing it and holding it and playing politics with it that is a that's going to be a very very important uh, issue uh, in the future because it could very well be used as a weapon tomorrow if economics can be a weapon vaccines can also be a weapon the denial of vaccine to nations which are potentially likely to suffer the effects of corona or covid-19 to a greater extent so these these are issues which will obviously play a major major role the other aspect which will emerge in global geopolitics is the nature of security ab dekhi uh traditionally traditional security jo hoti hai wo borders ke bare mein hoti hai internal security hoti hai uh, aajkal last few years we have been explaining to our audiences a uh, lot about hybrid conflict a uh, hybrid conflict ke andar bhi there is a military uh, angle attached to it counter terrorism uh, is a very strong aspect of it um, particularly the military approach to counter terrorism and things like that kya ye sab chalta rahega is tarah se a lot of people i speak to a lot of good scholars a lot of diplomats and security analysts they are of the opinion ke traditional threats jo hoti hain ye this is going to be something of the past because dekhiye to fight conventional wars you need a tremendous amount let's take an example the united states in afghanistan since 2001 till 2020 may have spent something to the tune of 3 to 4 trillion dollars hum to imagine bhi nahi kar sakte ki what is 3 to 4 trillion dollars i mean we are looking at a 5 trillion dollar economy for our nation as an annual 5 trillion dollar economy uh iraq the united states went there they were there for 8 years at least a trillion dollars were were spent there so if you require if you have to go for campaigns if you have to go for war fighting if you need the use of aircraft and you need the you need the use of of manpower and and tanks and artillery etc it's going to be tremendously expensive no one is going to find that money in this post corona post covid 19 phase for that kind of uh, engagement with the, your adversaries what has happened is that technology has given many other ways of engagement today so non traditional threats are going to emerge in a much much bigger and the non traditional threats could be cyber the world is all networked today and cyber which can penetrate into your networks and take down your networks you find your banking system your atcs of your airports aapka pura railway system aapka supply chain jitni supply chains aapki hai wo unke andar badha dalna it can bring a society to a grinding halt so ye non traditional threats cyber jaisi hai uh influence media war and 
extensive use of propaganda through the internet, through social media, impinging on the minds of your adversary population. That is going to be a fake news, which is going to be a thing by itself. It is already a thing by itself, for which not many answers are emerging. As many fact files as you may create, as many facts you may want to check, fake news will always be double, triple or quadruple of the amount of um, fact files that you'll be able to put out into public domain. So this is with war unaffordable, obviously non-traditional threats are going to be rising to a very great extent. Then a new world order. 1989 maybe a new world order will emerge. What is the meaning of a new world order? After every major war, which encompasses the whole world, so let's take the pandemic also as a, as a war-like situation. A new world order or some changes in the world order take place. And the world order is all about, you know, economic blocks, how, how nations align with each other, how they look at commonality of interests among each other, the UN system. Now, in 1989, the Cold War period, the UN importance of the UN. The UN Right? Um, the world was in a reasonable state of balance with the Soviet Union on one hand and America on the other hand. It used to be called a bipolar world. And suddenly, the Soviet Union broke up, broke up and it became a unipolar world with only the United States. And the United Nations from 89 suddenly became a very important entity, politically, militarily, peacekeeping around the world, preventing conflicts, peace prevention, peace enforcement, peacekeeping. All these terminologies came up or became much more important after 1989. Uh, functioning philosophies like globalization against protection, this also becomes a part of the, of the world order. Uh, the balance of power, shifting of the balance of power. This is the most important aspect of a new world. You found that in 1989, the, uh, the Soviet Union started breaking up in 1991 with the breakup. Berlin Wall, uh, Warsaw Pact was a state of self-destruction. The sudden shift in the, in, in the balance of power took place. You suddenly found NATO emerging, the United States as the, as the single power of the world, singular policeman of the world, Europe suddenly becoming very powerful. The, the emphasis and focus suddenly shifted to Asia Pacific. Used to be known as Asia Pacific that time. Aajkal usko Indo Pacific kehte hain. Kyun? Kyunke United States felt that the next threat was actually from China. And that it was important now to concentrate on Asia Pacific, the Pacific region, the Pacific Island territories, um, Southeast Asia, South Asia which uh, borders um, the Pacific region, the Indian Ocean region, all this is going to become much more important than Europe. And you found the theater of uh, concern, the strategic theater of concern shifted from Europe all into the Asia Pacific. Magar saath saath, beach mein threats emerged in the Middle East, threats emerged in Afghanistan, and you found that instead of being able to shift to, to Asia Pacific, the United States and Europe had to come back midway and and shape and put his focus into shaping the Middle East and shaping the area of the Central Asian Republics, south of that in, in the area of uh, Afghanistan, the concern about Iran and things like that. This all was a part of the emerging world order. To say at any time that new world order ban gaya hai, yes, yes, it nahi hota hai. New world order, world order to hai is always in a state of flux. Ye banta rehta hai. Or um, balance of power shift hota rehta. Is me economics plays a role, politics plays a role, military power plays a role, maritime, particularly maritime power, air power and maritime power plays a tremendous role. Diplomacy plays a, a great role. This technology, the development of technology plays a great role. Institutions of the world, the existence of how strong these institutions are, that plays a very major part. United Nations, ke upar mene kafi already said, sa kiye, but I must, must just bring this out here. By questioning the World Health Organization, the World Health Organization being branded as China's World Health Organization, uh, the trust deficit which has been created in the World Health Organization doesn't augur well for the world. Um, of course, uh, 
the United States, the Western powers, etc. Everyone are very happy to lay the blame at the moment uh, without complete research, etc. on China. And of course, China is culpable, at least so far, we all feel it is culpable for having actually created this virus or allowed this virus to go free for not having warned the world sufficiently and then undertake a whole process of actually seeking opportunities to strengthen its own power, which is what China is doing. So, the, you know, the United States, by pulling back funding from the World Health Organization, may not be doing the finest of things. But uh, you are finding that institutions of the United Nations themselves are under question. How quickly the United Nations gets its act together? Abhi tak Security Council ke andar, UN Security Council ke andar, maybe eight meeting we had, I think, uh, discussion ke liye, but the world is questioning. Why is the UN Security Council not uh, meeting and why not addressing this whole issue? After all, um, a pandemic issue is as much a security issue. And therefore, it falls within the ages of the United States, United Nations Security Council. So, the overall, the United Nations, uh, uh, not uh, the, the image and perception of the United Nations and its capability, which had taken a, a upsurge after 1989, is suddenly going to be questioned uh, post this pandemic. Will China start funding the? Of course, I think it's already started funding. It's already promised something to, but it cannot probably match up to what the. United States was doing. China's uh, contributions to international institutions are way behind what the United States has been doing over the years. So if the United States doesn't uh, fund institutions of this kind, international institutions of this kind, and starts looking uh, inwards only and says America first, then uh, what is going to be the future of international uh, institutions such as this? Um, if, if the United States is really not interested under this current president, <coughs> he's not really interested in the strengthening of the UN system, then the world may start questioning as to what is the necessity of the existence of the United Nations in, a, in the city of New York. Perhaps it should be shifted uh, to Geneva or some other some other part of Europe or some other part of the world uh, for that for that matter. That brings me to many other prestigious international institutions uh, with the US not in lead. Will these institutions survive? Or is it also, I'm putting this question out, is it that the United States' reluctance to take international leadership at the moment is only personality based? Is it only the personality of President Donald Trump, who says that America first, and uh, that's the way we will strengthen ourselves, there's no need for globalization, um, America has contributed too much to the world, and there's no need for it to do all that. Um, maybe we may find Joe Biden as the president at the end of the year, if it happens. And that may take a complete sea change. Because it's known sometimes that the Democrats have a very different way of doing things. Maybe a Republican, uh, uh, other than uh, uh, Donald Trump, may himself find uh, different ways of dealing with the situation. Uh, personal liberties around the world. Now, of course, uh, post-1989, particularly, the United States took the lead in promoting human rights or khas taur pe personal liberties khula pan aapki individual niji taur pe liberties hai iske upar bahut emphasis di that democratic nations need to have openness about them uh, empowerment of people human security and and uh, things like that uh, the united states concept uh, and belief was that by the promotion of all this, you, it leads to greater stabilization, internal stabilization of societies. Uh, the lesser amount of dictatorships you have, uh, the better it is. The United States tried it in the Arab Spring, as you are aware. In the Arab world, 2011, 12, 13, it, it did not uh, succeed. But um, with uh, this kind of openness which has been there all these years, and now with the advent of greater surveillance systems, uh, you are seeing already that one of the very great characteristics of this particular uh, virus has been, or this pandemic, has been the necessity of uh, tracking, tracking of people. Your movement, um, your mobile phone itself, with, uh, with the help of a of a app, can bring out where exactly have you been, etc. Um, this is only the beginning. A lot of people say, and therefore, while we are developing the 
the methodologies of, contest, of contesting the COVID-19, is it that human beings around the world will be subjected to much greater surveillance and uh, their privacies will be now far greatly compromised? This is again an issue which will have to be looked at. Will nations start looking at the opportunities that this is going to be an opportunity to enhance their own power? This can happen locally, it can happen regionally, and it can happen internationally. Kya Pakistan, India? Locally, if we look regionally, not just locally, if we look at it, does Pakistan feel like it is a very great opportunity for India? The economy is down, it will happen, maybe. और uh, क्या उसका फायदा उठाया जाए अपनी इन्फ्लुएंस बढ़ाने के लिए uh, कोई और uh, um, uh, 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 अपनी जो पूरी स्ट्रेटजी है उसको किसी और शेप से देखने की दिस कुड दिस कुड वेरी वेल हैपन ऑल्दो पाकिस्तान इटसेल्फ इज गोइंग टू इक्वली सफर एंड इकोनॉमिकली विल प्रोबेबली इमर्ज एज अ फेलिंग और ऑलमोस्ट फेल्ड स्टेट बट इन दीस काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशंस व्हेन स्टेट्स हैव बिकम एक्सट्रीमली वीक यू डोंट नो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज दे सी रीजनली a strengthening of let's look our own look at our own local environment string of pearls is ko hum kehte the usko agar string of pearls na kahe hamara neighborhood jo hai uske andar chinese influence jo hai jisko humne kafi had tak contest kar diya counter kar diya hai sri lanka mein maldives mein etc kya ye nations jo hai inki economies pe bahut zyada asar padega abhi qabiliyat hamari qabiliyat kya hogi bharat mein to be able to support these nations bangladesh ko dekhiye aap टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री ऑफ बांग्लादेश जिसके ऊपर एक्सपोर्ट्स बांग्लादेश की चलते हैं पूरे अमेरिका में आप यूरोप में जाइए किसी भी क्लोथिंग स्टोर में जाइए आपको बांग्लादेश के के कपड़े मिलेंगे सब वो एंड 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 बांग्लादेश इज बिल्ट अप इट्स फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व थर्टी सिक्स थर्टी सेवन बिलियन डॉलर बेस्ड ऑन दीज आउटस्टैंडिंग एक्सपोर्ट बी डूइंग ओवर टाइम बट सनडे एवरीथिंग डाउन विद दिस तो क्या दीज कंट्रीज will be seeking uh, economic support help the world may not be able to find institutionalized systems by which uh, imf world bank ye sab institutions jo hai kitni had tak ye inka deshon ko support kar payenge to jo scope reh jayega unme support karne ke liye kya china step in kar sakta hai can china step in, in into a into a void of that kind because especially when if cuz china Uh, is although its deployable resources will definitely reduce and dilute, uski economy be kafi decelerate karegi, but still it may find it strategic enough at this time to actually scrounge for resources and invest them here, bring come to the support of some of these countries, particularly along the ASEAN belt. ASEAN ke andar iska asar hone wala hai. Cambodia, Laos, Philippines, in deshon mein bahut zyada asar hone wala hai. किस हद तक कितना पैसा चाइना के पास होगा कि ऐसे देशों के अंदर स्प्लर्ज कर सके या कुछ हद तक उनकी सपोर्ट में आए ये दिखाने के लिए कि चाइना इज विद तो दिस दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी मेजर इश्यू ऑफ कोर्स फ्रॉम अ लाइटर एंगल अ लॉट ऑफ अदर इश्यूज विच ऑन द सोशल साइड विच विल बी इफेक्टिंग विल बी पर्टिकुलरली एंटरटेनमेंट इंडस्ट्री इज गोइंग टू is going to take a take a beating to a very great extent uh, travel industry aapne dekha hai already has taken a great beating i i do not anticipate ke travel normalize hoga for quite some time agar aap 30% seats ke upar hawai jahaz ko chalayenge to kahan se iski uh, economics kahan se banega iska we are fortunate that um, oil prices are down at the moment and 19 dollars pe to shayad uh, kuch had tak travel industry tab bhi chal payegi but i don't i anticipate that oil prices will remain uh, as low as this some solutions will probably be found for that uh aap ki socially aapke andar iska asar hi hone wala hai ke the, the the future of families family meetings um at the drop of a hat people used to plan a holiday pick up a couple of airline tickets and take off for australia and take off for singapore meet family and come back इंडिया के अंदर भी यू नो द गुजराती ट्रेडिशन ऑफ हॉलीडेज बंगाली ट्रेडिशन ऑफ हॉलीडेज लॉट्स ऑफ देम लव टू गो एज टूरिस्ट ऑल ओवर द कंट्री एंड मैनी पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड फाउंडेड टूडे 
All this is going to take a beating. So this is going to have a deep social effect uh, on the family system uh, itself. Family bonds ke upar, zyadatar ab, aapko agar internet ke upar is tarah se baat karni hai, jise aap aur mein baat kar rahe hai is waqt, so then obviously it's going to have a, its own impact on social dynamics. Energy politics. Oil prices are okay, but I mean, both already bath culture. Okay, I'm gonna up with all the top of the other. There's a dish in Iraq now. Iraq is almost entirely dependent, almost 65 to 70 percent of its government expenditure is met through the income that it gets from oil and energy. Same is with Nigeria, the same is with Venezuela in Latin America. Kuwait. Saudi Arabia ke paas reserves bahut hai. United States ke paas reserves bahut hai. So as a result, they've got deployable reserves and they can, they can therefore continue to meet their expenditure and live with it. But uh, these smaller countries are going to have a major problem, which means to sustain uh, the oil industry itself, sustain government jobs, sustain development, human development, all this is going to become very, very questionable. और इसका असर जो है मिडिल ईस्ट के ऊपर बहुत बड़ा होने वाला है हमारे 8 मिलियन लोग वहां काम करते हैं उनके ऊपर क्या असर होने वाला है वहां से 40 बिलियन डॉलर हमारी रेमिटेंसेस आती हैं उसका क्या होने वाला है 40 बिलियन डॉलर्स का एकदम से रिडक्शन और अगर 8 मिलियन चलिए उसमें से 4 या 5 मिलियन लोगों को वापस आना पड़ा अपने जॉब्स खोकर तो इसका सोशल इंपैक्ट भारत में क्या होगा दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी हैव टू बी वेरी सीरियसली लुकिंग एट अभी हम अखबारों में देख रहे हैं कि नेवल चीफ कह रहे हैं कि हमारे शिप्स तैयार हैं हम लोगों को उठा के वहां से ला सकते हैं यहां पर ये सब ठीक है दैट इज इमरजेंसी मगर वी शुड बी नाउ लुकिंग एक्चुअली एंड आई एम श्योर अ गवर्नमेंट इज लुकिंग मोर सीरियसली जिस तरीके से हमने अपनी डिप्लोमेसी के साथ मिस्टर मोदी के लीडरशिप के नीचे जिस तरह से हमने रिलेशनशिप बनाई है अपनी विद वेस्ट एशियन कंट्रीज मिडिल ईस्टर्न कंट्रीज एंड गल्फ कंट्रीज के साथ खास तौर पे उसका हम कैसे फायदा उठा सकते हैं? To make sure that uh, most of our people remain employed and continue to help these countries in uh, retrieving their economies. You can't have at the drop of a hat uh, um, throwing out people all of a sudden and once again when things come back to normal trying to get them back again. Now, these people have very much contributed to the growth of uh, the entire Gulf region. And therefore, it is only incumbent that uh, these nations respect their capabilities much more. Okay, um, I've already spent a better part of 45 minutes. I'll speak for about five or seven minutes more, not more than that. War industry ka kya hoga? Ab yaad rakhiye ke, ek chodi si misal ke taur pa. 1990, the United States signed a deal with Kuwait. कि 150 F-15, F-15 तकरीबन काफी हद तक पुराना एयरक्राफ्ट है, इसकी टेक्नोलॉजी भी कुछ खास नहीं है। F-15 के 150 हवाई जहाज वो बेचेगा कुवैत को, और कुवैत विल पे कैश फॉर इट। आप को मालूम है कि 150 F-15 हवाई जहाज को मैन्युफैक्चर करने से, उनको बेचने से अमेरिका में छह साल के लिए तकरीबन Create hoge. You have to understand that much of the contribution to world economy comes from war industry, military industry. Now, if you are seeing that the world is the capability to fight, the conventional war is the capability to fight, or it will fall, then how much will it affect the military industry? Can the American military industry sustain it? Will there be nations around the world willing to buy um, huge, uh, uh, very, very technical aircraft? Will India want to buy more S-400 uh, uh, Army Air Defense uh, systems from Russia? $5 billion ki deal thi, last time to deal with 39,000 to 40,000 crores worth of rupees that we spent. So that is the volume of money which is involved in, in uh, military and defense industry. So this is a point which I'm just flagging for you. याद रखिए चाइना जो है इस इन चीजों के ऊपर बड़ा हावी हो रहा है इस गेटिंग वेरी एग्रेसिव ऑन दिस इट्स नॉट टेकिंग इट वेरी वेल दिस क्रिटिसिज्म व्हिच इज कमिंग अबाउट अगेंस्ट द सो कॉल्ड वुहान 
uh, virus, etc. It's seeking its opportunities. At the same time, it is acting uh, extremely offensive. Now, Australia, ke saath, agar aap dekhi, Australia is the one which is one of the countries which took the lead in um, asking the world to investigate ki ye Wuhan virus aya kahan se, what was China's actual role in the creation of this pandemic. And suddenly I found the other day in the media, China has issued a warning to Australia. You stop this business of trying to investigate or we will hold back our tourists. Our tourists will not go to our tourists. I will tell you, I was in Melbourne two years ago and I was on a tour. There were 30 people on that tour. My wife and I were the only two other 28 they were Chinese with us. So Australia's industry, the industry economy is a lot of time. Uh, Chinese uh, tourist influx, ke upar, Chinese trade, ke upar, kafi tak okay. So, uh, I think I've covered a, a, a lot of ground. Uh, of course, there will be effect on things like uh, there will be a lot of effect on Afghanistan. Kya hoga future? Um, Afghanistan itself requires eight billion dollars to just about survive. If eight billion dollars of external. Aid just about to survive. Just kuch apne aap utpadan hota hai, kuch apni economy ke andar wo pada karte. But eight billion dollars is not an easy sum of money to just contribute. And if the United States is now pulling out completely and it feels that its interests are not there in Afghanistan, how is the, the Afghan economy going to sustain? Ek cheez jo connected with what I have just said and connected with what I said about uh, the future of Iraq, Kuwait, and Syria and countries like that. Is that अगर इनकी economies गिर गईं इतनी हद तक, jobless हो गए लोग, तो you've guessed it, the biggest issue which is going to come up is terror. Already existing infrastructure है, already मात in Islamic state को पर पूरी हद तक मात नहीं पड़ी. It is always possible to get back to radicalism, greater radical ideologies, emergence of new groups here and there. ये एक बड़ा मेजर डेंजर होगा दुनिया के लिए एंड आई थिंक आई आई पर्सनली फील द वर्ल्ड नीड्स एन इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस वेरी अर्ली टू डिस्कस ऑल दिस डायनेमिक्स बिकॉज़ इस डिस्कशन के बिना एक दूसरे के साथ समझना ये ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट्स जो हैं उसको हटाना ये अपॉर्चुनिटीज जो लोग समझ रहे हैं कि नेशंस में सीक अपॉर्चुनिटीज दीस काइंड ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज इनको दूर रखना Seeking self-seeking opportunities ko dur rakhna. Economic balancing ko lana. Bringing about and most important the search for an inter, the international efforts for the search of a of a, of a COVID-19 vaccine. These are going to be some of the major issues which are just pending and waiting for someone to take leadership. Leadership. leadership? Is it a natural thing? If the United States is not going to be a leader, you presume it. That China is a natural aspirant to be a leader. Why? Why should we allow it to be a natural aspirant to be a leader? Um, can Russia be? Does it have the capability? Does it have the economic might today? Okay, it's got all the oil at the moment, but it's not been able to even manage the prices of oil in conjunction with the uh, Saudi Arabia. Will it be Europe? You're seeing the United Kingdom already in the last stages, or at least in the middle of its uh, Brexit uh, episode. The power of Europe has waned to a very great extent, and Europe itself has been one of the worst hit uh, regions as far as the COVID 19 pandemic is concerned. So, you've guessed it, I'm coming back finally to that point. Can India get take the leadership? And is it the opportune moment for us? You've got a prime minister who thinks. You've got a prime minister who's popular. You've got a well-emplaced government, politically strong government. You've got a prime minister who's got his linkages with almost every nation of the world. You've got a strong diplomatic core, although we could do with many more diplomats. Right. Uh, and your economy may not, hopefully not take such a debt. Already there are predictions that 21, 22, you may bounce back to 6.5%. Even if it bounces back to 4.5%, I, I would say that's not too bad. So is this a golden opportunity? 
perhaps this is an opportunity to feel the feel the ground and see uh, can we can we put in our stakes it's not as if we are just jumping into the cauldron and trying to grab importance and grab uh, the leadership of the world but let the world look at us with greater trust much greater trust than what the world looks at china the china ke sath jo trust deficit hai uska opposite hai with india india is considered an open society in india is considered a society with which business can be done can we get our act together what will it take for us to take the leadership already you have had a, an international event with the prime minister leading the video conferencing um we had a regional thing with sark can can this be redoubled can can the can these efforts be doubled this is something i'm extremely hopeful of and i will look for a lot of inputs from you to tell us uh, which way is uh, india's lot moving uh, as far as geo the geopolitical the geo economic the geostrategic situation of the world is panning out thank you very much i think i've come to the end here man it's already bol liya 53 minutes i have spoken i will end here with the note that i have always enjoyed speaking to kashi manthan and i hope that i will come back and keep speaking i hope that this subject has not come to an end because ye subject abhi agle saal do saal chalta rahega we will keep coming back to discuss it with each other and by that time you will probably give me many more answers than what i can give you i have only flagged a lot of issues to you i hope some of them have been absorbed for you to be able to undertake your own research and make up your own mind thank you very much jai hind now i'm going to be looking at some of your questions <clears throat> and i think uh, mayank ne pehle hi bata diya tha ki agar to question hai khas taur pe usme aap uh, zarur uh, question likh dijiye ha ye mayank mayank ka khud ka question aa gaya so let me let me I'll start with his question is asked in english oh kaha gaya ekdam se mayank has disappeared all of a sudden once like once let me just say where is my friend mayank gone One second, Mank. Ah, uh, as you say, fake news is an instrument of war nowadays. कहाँ गया ये? This question keeps jumping. That's the problem here. One second, I have to answer. Ah, uh, no, Mank. Mank has asked a lot of questions. So, uh, okay, let me start with this. Do you think that the propaganda about minority treatment in India, particularly on CAA and COVID-19 treatment, impacts our relations with the United Nations? Very good question. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Ah, uh, the whole issue of uh, fake news, social media, influence warfare, information warfare. Is that the scandal? Ah, we had a slightly un unfortunate environment which had preceded this uh, pandemic. and uh, suspicions were rife uh, is unfortunate unfortunate because ye perceptions in a multi uh, faith society such as india should really not exist unfortunately there are elements who are not educated enough there are elements who do not understand what goes into the strengthening of a nation rather than weakening of a nation ye sab cheeze zara iske wajah se mahol jo tha thoda sa awkward sa ho gaya और इसी के बीच में ये तबलीगी इंसिडेंट हो गया और उसके ऊपर क्योंकि सोशल मीडिया इतना वायरल सोशल मीडिया है उसके ऊपर इतनी ज्यादा न्यूज फैलने लगी कुछ हद तक ये न्यूज सही थी कुछ हद तक ये गलत थी मेनी पाकिस्तानी हैंडल्स एंटर इन टू इट लेट मी नॉट पुट दू एंटायर ब्लेम दैट मतलब फेक न्यूज ज्यादातर फेक न्यूज जो है वो पाकिस्तानी हैंडल्स और you know which are the ones which are sponsored handles maybe probably from within india uh, they are the ones these recent studies by some of our agencies have shown how many of these fake um, news are coming from handles which are existing in the middle east itself and pakistan itself so this is a problem that we are going to face and we are going to face it for quite some time then we will have to find whenever you have to look at fake news you have to counter it by a, a stronger narrative a much stronger narrative fake news creates temporary narratives which join up together to create a lot of negativity 
you got to counter it by a similar thing of a lot of positive news combining together to make a positive land. मैं हर दिन आप बहुत से लोग आपके मेरे साथ एंगेज हैं ट्विटर के ऊपर आप मैं देखते हैं सिंपल थिंग मैंने आज सुबह एक पॉजिटिव वो स्ट्रिंग चलाया थ्रेड चलाया कि मुझे सबसे ज्यादा मजा इफ्तार का रमजान में तब आता है जब मेरे इफ्तार के टेबल पर शाम को साढ़े सात बजे सफ्तार के टेबल पे हर मजहब का हर धर्म का इंसान जो है वो मेरे साथ मौजूद है मुझे लगता है कि खुदा की पूरी जो देन है तब है मेरे पास जब मैं आई है पीपल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट फेथ्स एंड डिफरेंट कम्युनिटीज हु आर पार्टेकिंग ऑफ माई इफ्तार गॉड हेज गिवन मी दैट केपेबिलिटी टू पुट दैट इफ्तार ऑन द टेबल नॉट फॉर माई सेल्फ नॉट फॉर माई फैमिली इट इज टू शेयर विद दो I love those people who I like, and I like people from every community and every religion and faith. This is what I, which I put out. It created it created a positive number of positive uh, inputs, but one or two were negative ones. Now those are the negative ones, which keep questioning. A a positive input ko bhi question karna. A lot of people come back to me, ask me all about other questions. Yeah, okay, you are okay, but others are not okay. by by uh, appreciating me uh, and also taking an example from what i am saying if you can educate someone else and tell him see he is an example why don't you be follow his line that is the kind of thing you should you should undertake and that is how narrative positive narrative is built you see india's biggest positive narrative is its multiculturalism its multi faith this aspect has to be driven home into the majority minority every kind of community here that we are unique in this world that is the strength of india aur isko fake news jo hai koshish karte rahegi isko iske andar divisiveness paida karne ki and we will keep falling for it those elements who fall for it do not realize that you are doing tremendous damage to the country to what the government is attempting to do what all the agencies are attempting to do what your armed forces are attempting to do do we need a structured approach to do this that's a debatable issue lots of nations are following a structured approach um i say a lot of uh, a lot of uh, think tanks need to come together we need to we need to put out a lot of intellectuals into the into think tanks around the world we need to create systems within government agencies or small organizations within the government within states i am a member of the national disaster management authority today and similarly there are state disaster management authorities right at every place there is an sdma there is a district disaster management authority at 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 every district in all 750 districts of india is there a can't we now ultimately do this on information building also building up of information i think a time has come after all disaster ko bhi recognize karne ke liye as an as a national threat a national security threat finally only 2005 mein iska national disaster management act enact kiya gaya it didn't happen in the 100 years ago so is it time now for us to look at information as a weapon system this is something worth debating thinking about very deeply my ek ne bahut acha sawal pucha hai um i'm i've not given you definitive answers which i have never given a thing like this what we need is to think much more but these are inputs for you to think about let me look at some more questions i don't know whether i can answer every question but let me come anurag patap singh ne pucha hai many business, small business or startups are going to collapse many giant companies are going to come in india as well as for the news what do you think of the pros and cons of this on startups and all this uh, response will be of course given by a good economist who will understand it perhaps far better but yes our recent efforts of the recent years which led to Uh, the vibrance of the indian economy and the creation of uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurship uh, within india 
uh, a business environment and a business atmosphere in India. All this uh, may get hit. I am hopeful to some extent, to that extent that maybe migrant labor was not so deeply involved with many of these small startups. Some of these small startups are, are actually microscopic startups. Where migrant labor was, has been involved with in, in fair numbers with these startups, obviously it's going to make an effect because my suspicion is that migrant labor has just gone back, is still not been able to reach its villages, is going to reach there in the next few days or weeks, is going to lose its confidence, social confidence, economic confidence is going to be lost to a great extent. We will have to restore that confidence, we'll have to work on restoring that, that confidence so that they can hope to come back and come back to good old days. Uh, to their good old jobs or maybe newer jobs, uh, sustain themselves because they are, this confidence has been so badly shattered. That is why they, they took to the road. And that's why they felt that they just could not survive in, in the urban environment of um, metropolises like Delhi and Mumbai. So there's no doubt. But uh, I don't think all our, all our uh, startups are going to be uh, affected in this manner. Many of the ones which are which are internet based. Uh, Things like that. Many of them are, of course, um, food delivery. Food delivery is dependent hugely on migrant labor. A lot of people have been working with it. I'm told many of them have not gone back. Many of them are still working. Uh, food delivery is taking place to some extent. A lot of core people from the couriers. Uh, I'm, as soon as in the next one week, 10, 10 days or so, as soon as um, courier delivery starts with uh, some of these uh, larger organizations like Amazon, etc., you will find a uh, Many of these people will come come back. Uh, the Uber and the, the Ola uh, industry, transportation is a necessity. Many of them have parked their cars and gone away home. They will return, uh, subject to the reintroduction of uh, transportation uh, in the in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a slow process. I mean, it can't have it can't happen overnight. There will be a tremendous amount of pressure on the infrastructure. Um, hopefully, hopefully, uh, there will not be such a dent. Uh, I agree that a lot of companies may come out of China or other places like that um, and, and invest in India or seek opportunities in India. Um, there could be competitiveness, but I don't think they will completely subsume uh, many of our startups, which are fairly unique. Many of our startups are fairly unique to that extent. So it's a challenging situation, there's no doubt. And I won't say it's very positive at the moment, but I'm quite hopeful that the manner in which the government is managing it, um, the effect uh, is going to be comparatively marginal, although it, it will be there very much. Okay, let me just see. Uh, Jay Patidar. Is there any requirement to change our foreign trade policy with neighbors countries, neighboring countries after lockdown and to overcome economic crisis. Of course, uh, nothing like uh, unfortunate thing is that our SARC platform is not sufficiently developed. And SARC economics, because of our relationship with Pakistan, unfortunate that it hasn't really taken off the MFN status that we had earlier, which, which we gave Pakistan and Pakistan never ever gave us. Uh, all this has really affected uh, trade and economics as far as the region uh, is concerned. Uh, no doubt that uh, giving it an impetus because uh, that's the least amount of expenditure, the least amount of effort. It doesn't require transport, so, so, so much of transportation. Obviously, all this is going to uh, contribute uh, and contribute quickly to the economy. More than that, it's going to contribute to the influence that you seek in these countries because if you don't go in and trade there if you don't go in and support there someone else is going to do it that has to be very clear so regional trade dynamics regional economics is definitely going to be of a very much higher order of importance than what it has been in the, in the recent past very good question by the Vyanshu Verma something which I should have put out myself at this stage Will the UN does the UN Security Council need to be reconstituted and China has no place there? Very interesting question. 
Uh, India has been seeking its place in the UN Security Council. We have also looked at middle powers like Japan, Brazil, South Africa, finding their place here. Maybe from um, Africa, if besides South Africa, could be also looking at some country like Nigeria or something like that. Um, that that's been on for quite some time. Considering India's greater contribution, progressively greater contribution, it may not happen overnight. No restructuring of the UN is going to take place overnight. But as India's importance increases. Um, and the world realizes it. This is the time to peg it. We should go in with greater drive on this issue. China is going to try and deny us. Definitely. I strongly feel uh, the major debate going to happen in the near future is going to be whether India should be in engagement with China, in competition with China, or in uh, conflict with China. And my personal, uh, my personal opinion is that we need to be in engagement with China. I think, I think uh, we will benefit tremendously from it. Although China will continue to be the receiving end of uh, multiple attacks on it uh, diplomatically from the world, uh, particularly from the Western countries. But at the same time, let me warn you. Uh, the United States may not have may, maybe may be looking at China with, uh, diplomatically with a negative eye. At the same time, the United States has absorbed a lot of uh, a lot of manufacturing uh, from China. Uh, a lot of uh, medical equipment coming in from there. Europe similarly. In fact, that certain certain uh, aircraft which have been thrown in from uh, China have actually been received by high level uh, delegations of U.S. Uh, of European um, ministries. Uh, at the airports and Chinese diplomats have been placed on platforms. So it's not as if China is suddenly a downturn. It's, it's a lot is being reported. A lot is being reported, but there are two sides to the coin. On one side, it's being criticized so hugely. On the other side, it is being appreciated uh, also. So we don't know which side this is going to pan out, how it is going to really pan out. An exit by China from the Security Council, to my mind, can be ruled out. I don't think so. China is there to play a, a more important role. Um, you cannot isolate China because look, China, I mean, we've gone too far ahead in the development of the international economy in which too many countries are dependent on, the, on China. The United States itself uh, has to sell its grain. There is no big, bigger grain market in the world than China. And you will find that in the near future, uh, a tremendous amount of grain will flow out. Uh, from the U.S. farmers. Otherwise, where do you, where do you uh, place all this grain? The United States produces a humongous amount of grain. Where do you store it? Where do you put it? It will have a major reverse effect on the United States. So, having said all this, I think I think China, China is going to emerge almost as strong as it has been. We should be looking at our additional place, enhancing our comprehensive power, looking at enhancing our image and perception around the world, our ability to do work for the world. And many of the things that we have contributed in the recent weeks will no doubt uh, enhance our, our overall perception. Uh, okay, now let me come to Rohan Roy's question. Does the pandemic induced derailment of the oil industry in the Middle East and Asia, in Middle East, lead to increase in terrorist threats in the world in general and in India in particular. I think I obliquely answered your question. I did say that the price of oil coming down in 18, 19 dollars. Um, let me put it this way: what my reading showed me was that a country like Iraq, sustainable if the price of oil comes to 60 to 65 dollars a barrel is sustainable uh, because 60 to 70 percent of his government expenditure is based upon its oil uh, intake. Now if it falls to one fourth of the price or one third of the price, obviously the government is not going to be capable be able to, to sustain the expenditure which it has been doing. It cannot invest in, 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 in infrastructure, it cannot uh, invest in, in uh, health and welfare. 
and governance, overall governance, and obviously if it's going to lead to more uh, um, loss of jobs uh, and things like that, more people, lesser education, lesser investment in, in education and things like that, obviously people are going to be on the roads, on the streets, and there's going to be street turbulence. And one of the ways that it manifests is, it, it, itself from that stage is that uh, you will find awkward ideologies emerging. This is exactly what happened to someone like uh, Al Zarqawi. How Al Zarqawi from the Al Qaeda in Iraq, um, he got hold of the cadres of the Ba'athist Party, the Republican Guard, etc., put them together, and that's how the ISIS was created at one stage. Mm. The United States took its eyes off from all those elements which have been demobilized, and all those demobilized elements who were jobless, etc., they all came into the fold of the ISIS. So what you say is absolutely right. This is a major threat. And the world will have to look at this with greater seriousness because very soon, otherwise, the next two, three years, you will find the re-emergence of that situation where we will be finding attacks taking place in uh, Europe and um, in, in Southeast Asia, even within uh, South Asia and places like that. But that brings me to a connected response to what you have asked. We saw an upsurge of population from Middle East, North Africa, moving into Europe. Immigration or emigration. Now, if there's going to be a major problem in Syria after the civil war, which is still going on, a downturn in oil prices, Iraq, North Iraq, instability in these areas. I hope you are reading the newspapers. I have not yet gone into the details of it. Lebanon, the situation in Lebanon yesterday was almost such that Lebanon was going down, going into a meltdown. Now, if there's a meltdown of the, of, of the, uh, in Lebanon, what is going to happen to the Hezbollah itself? What is going to happen to the cadres of the Hezbollah? What is going to happen to the connection with Iran? These are dynamics which we'll have to look at very, very seriously. And Lebanon is one angle only. If it happens to Syria, if it happens to Iraq, what is going to happen in Yemen? Places like that. How will, how will it ultimately pan out? Good question. Pradhan, uh, El <clears throat> Pradhan, your question is that our country is making COVID-19 vaccine, but it's very surprising that this vaccine being made so far fast, whereas according to the formula, it takes years to make this vaccine. Now, will this vaccine is going to work in this delicate situation? Oh, well, I'm not a medical doctor, but I can assure you, yes, you're right. The average uh, understanding which I have is that <coughs> averagely it takes 10 years to develop a vaccine for a, for a pandemic of this nature or a virus of this nature, the strain of COVID-19. But uh, there are bits and pieces of news coming out from different research institutions around the world. Oxford seems to be one of the main institutions where this research is going on. India, a lot of research is going on. Um, I think what we are looking at is temporary solutions at the moment. Not a developed, finally developed vaccine. That may still take the better part next two, three years by the time experiments are done on it and testing is done on it and things like that. What everyone is looking for at the moment is a quick fix solutions. How can, how to, how to make sure that these, uh, um, they are available immediately to control them and not create a situation of immunity completely. Uh, I don't know how fast it's going to develop, but uh, different opinions are saying uh, that uh, the, the pandemic will play itself out over the next two years before a herd immunity is finally created and a lot of deaths would have taken place by that time. But um, fortunately, it seems that Indian immunity is of a higher order and we may not suffer it to that extent. And our own research, much of it which is based on Indian conditions itself, hopefully will create some quick fix solutions by which we can, we can sort of uh, cap the casualty rates which are occurring at the moment. Hello. Well, I am back. I had a power outage here and all of a sudden my internet went. The computer was of course on, the internet went. But as a result, I had to, you know, uh, return. I, I had to switch off and come back and recreate the whole thing again. As a result, I've lost a lot of questions and therefore I would, I can extend this uh, session. I won't mind if you can kindly, quickly uh, type in your questions, the questions which were not answered. I think I was on Shikha's question at that particular time. 
So Shikhar, you could uh, ask that question. Meanwhile, there was someone who was, I was browsing the question. Someone had asked a question <coughs> whether China will survive at all uh, or will it do self-destruction like the manner in which the Soviet Union did uh, in the late 80s. So um, my answer to that is, well, you see, you have to understand it from a different angle. First of all, the Soviet Union was a collection of republics, 15 republics or more, actually, where we came together to form the Soviet republics. China is a homog virtually homogenous nation. And uh, it's managed to carry out Hanization um, almost everywhere, even in Tibet. Tibet is also very largely Hanized. Uh, a very centralized form of governance, um, not democratic, of course, like Soviet Union, not democratic. And uh, but the most important thing, economically, very powerful. It is the economics which played the main, the main role was played by economics. Uh, as far as the late 80s was concerned, when Gorbachev uh, came up with perestroika and glasnost at that time, it, the purpose of it was primarily economic. And uh, the United States um, strategy was purely that. Get the Soviet Union into competition mode, force it to spend so much on its defense industry, which became outmoded over a period of time, and then not have enough to be able to develop itself as a nation in terms of governance. And that is why when, it, when it, it went bust completely economically, there was no other no other way to, uh, well, it, if nothing else, it very, very peacefully, the Soviet Union broke up into the 15 republics. I don't think China is anywhere near that stage. What can happen is that the world gets together. I mean, that's an extreme scenario where the world gets together and um, says, okay, China was responsible for this. And if you want to isolate China, now, what, what goes against this kind of a strategy? Number one, you don't have a leadership in the world. The United States is not willing to assume leadership at the moment. The United States is saying America first. The United States has got a tremendous economic linkage with China. It, it can't just allow China to, to, be, to be wished away or to vaporize into thin air. Because China is holding stakes on the American economy. And that is how that is how actually stabilization of relationships are built up mostly when nations hold economic stakes in each other's uh, uh, economies. So uh, you may want to isolate China. We don't have a leader. Economically, most of the nations are looking to China to support them economically or to bring manufacturing. After all, much of Europe doesn't do manufacturing. The United States is weak in manufacturing. And it's China which has got all the factories. Of course, the price of manufacturing is going up in China. But all these are, these are simple dynamics. These kind of things are simple dynamics. China is not just going to disappear. I don't think so. It's, it's gone too far past. And if you really look deep into the documents of 2017 when the 19th Congress came together, the 19th Congress of the Chinese Communist Party, when they met and they, they evolved and projected a, a, a objective for China in the year 2049. You, you, can, you can make out from that. To be the, one of the most powerful nations of the world, to be in a position to defeat any adversary in the world by 2049. By 2035, to be so strong that no one can sort of take China for granted. I mean, these are some of the aspects of China's ideology and its strategy which which are there very much, and I don't think the world can do too much about it. Okay, now I think some of the questions are coming back. Okay, Raja Singh, hundreds of companies based in China are moving out from there. What would you suggest to Indian government and big companies so that we can welcome them on our soil? Correct to do this was a question by someone else. I'm sure you'll understand your question, whoever had asked it, that will this aspect of India attracting uh, hundreds of these so-called Chinese companies onto Indian soil Will it bring India to, into conflict with China? I don't think countries go to war with each other or conflicts with each other on these on, on these issues, right? Um, India is going to sustain its interests. It's going to look at its interests, right? Uh, they 
it's it's in competition with china for this kind of a thing it's in competition with china a lot of manufacturing which will be done by those companies if they come into india will also be exported back to china right so the trade will go on probably the trade there will be a better balance in, in trade um at the same time china is a cannot be considered to be a completely irresponsible nation it is attempting to meet the necessities and the requirements of being considered in the international community as a nation which can be relied upon that's how it was to be seen this covid-19 thing has actually dented its uh, image worldwide right now if other that if if uh, um, at the drop of a hat or on basis basis of economic competition uh, china is not going to come and attack india or, or and anyway when you attack a country like india what is the aim to teach india a lesson to achieve a victory over india to destroy the indian armed forces to destroy india and you know from within are these achievable aims nations don't go to war go they say i don't like so and so nation they go for certain objectives and aims and that's a very important aspect which has to be kept in mind most people outside think you just go to war because you don't like someone i don't like his face i don't like that president's face so that i will go to war with that guy it's not like that like a lot of people say india should go with to war with pakistan first you have to clearly clearly enunciate your war aims what are your objectives do you have the capability and if you do have the capability and you do not achieve those aims what is going to be the effect on you there are a lot of lots of things war is not something which is just considered overnight and china is the last country which will think of it that way uh <clears throat> we should i would i would say i would say that uh, we should be in negotiation and engagement with china after all economics is a game of competition right there is give some take some and uh, I, and I'm, if, if if these companies are willing to come to india no china can't force them to stay in, in in china they want to pull out their um, hardware and, and and they want to invest in india because the conditions in india are, um, are are conducive to more profitability so be it that's the reason why they all went to china at the first time at the first instance itself so i don't i i, I think it's a welcome thing and india is already working on it to a great extent okay <clears throat> uh recently there were news that china has conducted many small nuclear tests as well as also conducting many military exercises is it china's drill to show off its military strength or china has planned to become a military superpower by taking and one by taking advantage of this crisis yes i have been reading about a lot of uh, activities which have been taking place internally in china a lot of projections here and there of chinese military power etc <clears throat> some of it of course is to divert internal attention itself away from this pandemic and things like that um enhance uh, internal confidence among the people that this is no major effect on the on the pla and things like that and uh, at the end of it also to project power it will be reported it will be reported in news it will be reported on the internet all over there will be videos of it put out here and there if you remember during doklam and just after doklam there was a tremendous amount of build up in the tibetan plateau and they conducted a large scale maneuver and exercise throwing showing a lot of light firing and things like that it did it didn't make a dent on our thinking we we also know what you have got in china but we also know that you are not going to come and start throwing it at us because um, wars are not fought in this i somehow there is a notion in china that you know projection of capability um, is a weapon by itself it's a part of chinese strategic thinking um, at the cost of a little time if i may tell you china was the first nation and i think i brought this out earlier in kashi mantra china was the first nation which uh, learned the lessons of the first gulf war and came out with a doctrine called war under informationized conditions in 1993 further developed it and by 2003 they worked on uh, sun tzu's famous uh, principles of of fighting or winning a war without fighting a war right which is essentially meaning you don't have to engage into 
into hand to hand combat with your enemy or throw nuclear weapons at him you can win wars against him you can impose your will on other nations by other means which is non military means or or what you call non traditional means cyber media legal these are the three strategies they came out with it's called the doctrine of the three strategies so their intention is keep a strong set of armed forces bring down the strength they brought it below 14 um uh, lakhs 1.4 they brought it below 1.4 million the strength infuse a tremendous amount of technology have a tremendous amount of capability right project that to your adversary and then let that be imposed and imprinted on his mind psychologically that he cannot win a war against jack that is the thinking that that's the essence of it he is not going to come and fight a war with you i can assure you this because he knows that war against india in any context is not a winnable war sawal sawal mahamari ke baad kaun sa desh sabse pehle apne arthik vyavastha sambhal lega bahut badhiya question hai ye bilam kumar chaurasia sahab ne ye pucha hai sawal aur bahut acha sawal pucha hai ah dekhiye jis tarah se indications ja rahe hain is baat ah recession zyada tar duniya mein recession downturn ki wajah se recession hoga America has already probably entered into a recession. Most of Europe, UK will enter into a recession. Um, growth will be something of the past. If India one one percent, yeah, less than one percent growth will be happening, then it's a very good thing. China can be the same. You can see that China has fourteen percent growth in nineties, and if it's below one percent, yeah, one to two percent growth will be happening, then their situation will be very bad. it's a question of who can quickly who can quickly get his act together in terms of engagement with other nations you see a uh, globalization is not going away anyway is you can't do everything internally you can't do everything internally to mere khayal mein china par asar jo hai bada local hua hai ye area of wuhan and these areas manufacturing par itna zyada asar nahi hua हुआ है मगर इतना ज्यादा भी नहीं हुआ है एंड दे आर रैम्पिंग अप देर केपेबिलिटी वेरी गुड इन अ नॉन डेमोक्रेटिक सिस्टम वेर यू आर रियली नॉट बॉर्डर अबाउट वेलफेयर ऑफ पीपल एक्सेट्रा इट इज ऑलवेज मच इजियर टू डू दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग सो आई माय बेट्स आर दैट अ कंट्री लाइक चाइना विल प्रोबेबली इस महामारी के बाद वही शायद सबसे जल्दी आगे आएंगे स्टेबल होने में और साथ में of course you got much smaller economy taiwan south korea mere khayal mein japan ke andar qabiliyat bahut hai jab japan ke andar qabiliyat hai kyunki jab base level economics ka base level thoda gir jata hai to growth faster growth becomes possible to is a it's a bet bet is a it's a trade off between india china japan south korea taiwan ye countries hai Middle East is going to be badly affected. Europe is going to be badly affected. So is the United States of America. Ah, my pass call aara hai. Mike Ripta, I'm not sure if uh, I have exceeded my time. I maybe I'll take two questions more since I took a break in the middle. Is Lee? Is India's economy will be badly affected after the end of this pandemic? Look, it badly, it badly, very comparative cheese. प्रियांशु गुप्ता साहब ने पूछा ये बड़ी कंपैरेटिव टर्मिनोलॉजी है अगर आप कहें कि हम एकदम से अगर हमारी ग्रोथ 10 परसेंट थी और 6 परसेंट पे आ गई तब भी वो काफी खराब होता और 4.5 परसेंट फोर परसेंट से अगर 1 टू 1.5 परसेंट पे आ गई तो वो भी काफी खराब होता है मैं कहता हूं कि अगर हम बिलो जीरो नहीं गए मतलब ग्रोथ चलती रही और वी डू नॉट गो इन टू रिसेशन काइंड ऑफ अ मोर तो वी वुड स्टिल बी बेटर ऑफ और आई डोंट नो ऑन वॉट पैरामीटर्स मगर देर आर प्रोटेक्शन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू इफ दैंडेमिक गेट्स कंट्रोल वी कैन बाउंस बैक टू सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव इट कैन ऑफ कॉर्स बी रिव्यूड एंड ब्रॉड डाउन टू फोर पॉइंट फाइव फाइव परसेंट आई थिंक इट विल बी अट्रमेंडस अचीवमेंट ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया आर वी गुड इन साइबर दिवंशु शर्मा से वर्मा दिवंशु वर्मा साहब are we good in cyber and this and this is our time all we need is belief in our capability our cyber is can be developed far more 
इसके ऊपर गवर्नमेंट बहुत कर रही है अब अब यू आर अवेयर के साइबर इंडस्ट्री खड़ी कर दी है एंड देर इज अमाउंट ऑफ ट्रमेंडस अमाउंट ऑफ आई टी वर्क विच इज गोइंग ऑन इन गवर्नमेंट हाउ स्ट्रॉन्ग आर नेटवर्क आर विल बी विल बी वेली फाउंड आउट वेन मेजर साइबर अटैक्स और अटेम्प्ट आर मेड इन अस अफकोर्स वी आर वनरेबल we are vulnerable because we are one of those nations who are now reasonably well networked or network nations who are har vakt vulnerable rahengi for cyber threats who will audit china on covid 19 yeah interesting question the way iaea has audited iran iraq who will audit china on covid 19 dekhiye iran aur china ke beech mein bahut fark hai iran ki चलिए जियो स्ट्रेटेजिक लोकेशन बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट है मगर इकोनॉमिकली क्या है इट्स अ लार्ज नेशन 60, 70, 80 मिलियन पीपल इट्स अ लार्ज नेशन इंपॉर्टेंट नेशन इन द डायनेमिक्स ऑफ मिडल ईस्ट और वेस्ट एशिया चाइना अपनी जगह है ह्यूज <coughs> इकोनॉमी उसकी इकोनॉमी फेल हो गई सब कुछ हो गिर गया उसका तो ऑब्वियसली इज गोइंग टू मेक अ मेजर डेंट ऑन द इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमी इट तो Although the world is demanding an audit of China, will China admit to an audit? Iran को भी लाने के लिए टेबल पर कई साल लगे और वो भी बड़ा कोर्शन के साथ हो सैंक्शन के साथ हो दुनिया भर की चीज चाइना पर कौन सा सैंक्शन लगाएंगे आप अमेरिका की खुद ही डिपेंडेंस है चाइना के ऊपर पूरी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग के लिए अपने सेल ऑफ देयर व्हीट एंड ग्रेन उनके लिए So I don't think this audit is going anywhere as far as China is concerned. <clears throat> Our international internal consumption will fuel the economic growth. Hopefully, I, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Divanshu Sharma sir, Divanshu Varma sir. Sorry, um, good statement. Our consumption is very important, and um, although we are a nation who is known to have a reasonable uh, saving rate. One rate time we had gone up to 26 percent saving rate. Other say that if 33, 34, 35 percent is good, it's very good. But this is the time we don't need saving rate. We need now at this time consumerism to spend, and that will regenerate the whole economy, bring back jobs, bring back manufacturing, and things like that. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. Manisha Singh says, which is your favorite fiction book? Are you fiction? Manisha ji, itni itni padhi hai. Maine itna padha hai zindagi mein. But uh, among the books which come to mind immediately, the the author who comes to mind, one or two of them, Robert Ludlum, definitely, Frederick Forsyth, The Day of the Jackal, I remember years before the Jai Red, Dogs of War, or my uh, favorite uh, author was Alistair MacLean. Saal of pehle, Alistair MacLean, I have read a lot, and I have also read a lot of Dan Brown. I have also read uh, um, now. Let me recall. Beside Robert Ludlum, yeah, James A. Mishnah, his book Hawaii, which was fantastic. And uh, uh, lastly, if I can recall, uh, among other fiction-based books, early years, school days, and a little later, I read a lot of Ian Fleming. That generated my interest a lot in technology. in espionage in non traditional threats and things like that guys i think i have come to the end of this session it's been a, it's been a very rejuvenating session your questions have been outstanding ye me to manna padega ki mere pehle session se ab tak i mean quantum jump in the quality of thinking and capability drafting of questions etc ab aise hi aise hi sochte rahiye aise hi karte rahiye मैंने बहुत चीजें आपके लिए फ्लैग की हैं इनको इसके ऊपर गौर करिए गूगल करिए थोड़ा और पढ़िए गूगल से आज इफ नथिंग एल्स यू शुड लुक एट जस्ट गूगल द यूएस रोल इन पोस्ट कोविड 19 जियो पॉलिटिक्स एंड आपके पास छह आठ अच्छे अच्छे वीडियो मिल जाएंगे आई रीड द डिप्लोमैट अलॉट एक मैगजीन है द डिप्लोमैट आई रीड इट अलॉट आई वॉच सी एन एन and i go on cnn.com foreign policy magazine ke liye main subscribe karta hu i pay for it every month usko main padhta hu foreign affairs main padhta hu so there are lots and lots of literature which is online which is excellent around the world isi sab ki knowledge jo hai enhance hoti rahegi thank you very much
and we'll meet again once again. Jai Hind.